Hey there, my name is Upper Wesley, and today I'll be going in depth into the top down movement behavior. So I've created a scene with tiled sprites for the ocean, nine patch panel sprites for the islands, and then just a basic sprite for the trees. And then below that, I've got three different ship objects that I'm going to give the top down behavior to. So we'll open this first one and I'll explain the behavior. If we look down the list for behaviors, it shows up as top down movement, four or eight directions. And when we add the behavior, we'll see a checkbox for default controls, which are the arrow keys. Then you've got acceleration, which determines how quickly your object speeds up. Then you've got a checkbox for allowing diagonals, which obviously allows your character to move in diagonal directions. Then you've got deceleration, which determines how quickly your character slows down. Maximum speed, which is the maximum speed your character will go. Next for rotation, you have angle offset. If your image is already pointing to the right, which is the zero degree mark, you don't need to touch this. But if your image is pointing in a different direction, you'll need to tell the behavior which direction they're pointing here. And then to allow it to rotate in the first place, there's the rotation checkbox. There's the rotation speed, which is the speed the object rotates to point in the direction it's going. And then finally we have the viewpoint. So if you have an isometric game or a 2.5D game that has some kind of depth, this will adjust the angle the character moves at based on the specific angle of your game, whether it be true isometric or some other kind of specific angle. So now I've given each one of these ships the top-down behavior. But each one has a different variation. We have the blue ship that has eight directional movement and rotation. The green ship that doesn't rotate but has eight directional movement. And the red ship that doesn't rotate and has only four directional movement. Now I'm going to preview the game and show you what that looks like. If I move up, you'll see that the blue ship has rotated and the other ones haven't. Likewise, if I move down, but if I move diagonally, the red ship can't move diagonally, so it only goes to the top. And of course, each of these different movement styles has its own place in certain games. But something that's going to be used in all of these top-down games are obstacles. And for this, we're going to use the action separate two objects. And to keep it simple, we're going to put all the objects into two groups. We're going to open up the object group panel and create a group and call it ships. And then we're going to create another group and call that land. And then we just open each group and select which objects go into each group. And then we go to the event sheet and add the action separate objects. In this action, the first object selected is the one that will move or be displaced. And the second object will be the one that stays put. And for the majority of games, it's going to be the case that the player will be the thing that gets moved. And now if we preview the game, the ships can't go on land. They're being separated from the objects that are in the group, land. And now to show you another trick that's used in a lot of top-down games, specifically 2.5D and isometric games, and that's Z-ordering. So we have a floor tiled sprite and two object sprites, one being the obstacle and one being the player. The player has the top-down behavior, and if I preview the game without giving it the separate objects action, the character can just walk over everything. So to create this effect, we need to make sure that that's in place and go to the obstacle. Go to its collision mask and bring it down to a point where it would make sense with the obstacle type. You want the collision mask to be at the feet or the base of that thing. And then we go to extensions, look up Z order, and then you'll find the Y sort extension. What this extension does is modify the Z order of the objects that have this behavior to be equal to their Y axis. So things that are further up in the scene will have a lower Z order. So things that are lower in the screen will be ahead of them. And if we give this behavior to the player and the obstacle, then we can see this in practice. Because the player is above the obstacle, their Z order is behind the obstacle. When the player moves below the obstacle, their Z order is higher than the obstacle. 
so they show up in front of it. This extension isn't the right solution for all games, but it's a good solution for the majority of games set from this perspective. And then finally, I just wanted to mention that just like the platformer behavior, the top-down behavior has a bunch of conditions that can be used to trigger animations or effects based on what's happening with that behavior. Which means for this kind of character, we would just use the is moving condition to change its animation to a walking animation. And that covers the top-down behavior. As always, comment down below and tell us what kind of tutorial you want to see next time. I have been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.